Come with five reasons that you won't give up when life catch you on the blind side, when the messenger of misery visits you. What are you going to do? What will keep you in the game when life knocks you to the canvas? Life's going to punch you right in the face. Life's going to fire you over and over again. You're going to be told you're not good enough. Your faith is going to be tested. Your family's going to look you in the eye and say, how do we get health insurance the next month? I don't know, but I know we're going to make it. You know who's going to bail you out? You know who's going to come and rescue you? You know who's going to come and save the day? No one. No one's going to come and do it for you. You're going to have to do it all yourself. See, the Buster Douglas that fought in the last fight was not the Buster Douglas that fought Mike Tyson. See, the Buster Douglas that got knocked down while fighting Mike Tyson had gotten out of an alcohol recovery center. His mother had died. His wife was ill with a terminal illness. He was considered a nothing, a bum. So when he got knocked down, Buster Douglas had a reason to get back up because he said, I'm dedicating this fight to the memory of my mama. Life is hard, man. That's what it's about. Life is a challenge. If you don't work as hard as you can, if you don't sacrifice everything, if you don't get rejected and keep coming back for more, if you don't get your loyalty tested and your faith tested, you don't love that thing if you bail out. So if you fought through all that, that's love. So you've got to have some reasons that when life knocks you down and it's going to, hello, it's going to knock you down. When people disappoint you, and that's going to happen. When they betray you, and that's going to happen. When they lie to you, and that's going to happen. When they say, oh, you can count on me, and they won't show up, and that's going to happen. When you want to throw in the towel and give up yourself, and that's going to happen. When life collapses on you and catch you on the blind side, what reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? Find that reason. Because when life had knocked me down, I said, life, I'm doing this because I want to make my mama proud of me. I'm doing this because I want my children to have a better life than what I have. I'm doing this because all my life I've been told I'd be a loser, that I wouldn't make it. I'm doing this to make them a lie. I believe like Frank Sinatra, he said the best revenge in life is massive success. I'm doing this so I can become massively successful. And with that kind of courage, with that kind of affirmation and reason to empower me, I got a saying that when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. You don't have to be grim, but you do have to be serious. Hey, everybody hopes things will get better, but remember, the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. And hope unaided by clear plans can finally become an illness. There's a Bible phrase that says, hope long delayed makes the heart sick. It's a sickness. I used to have the illness known as passive hope. It's bad. And there's one that is even worse, and that is called Happy Hope. That is really bad. The man is 50, and he's broke, and he's still smiling. That's bad. So get serious. Make plans. Put them on paper. My suggestion from experience. There's a phrase from the Bible that goes, without dreams and vision, we perish. How true. Humans have this unique ability to aspire, to dream, to go for something, to become something. Without that, life is not life. We must have dreams and never give up on our dreams. I'd like to share a few ways your use of time are affected by or influence the achievement of your goals. Have you ever thought that without some very clear written goals, you never even need to consider managing your time? Time essentials come from objectives well-defined. Time can't be critical if objectives aren't defined. Now you might be one of those uniquely fortunate individuals who can keep all their objectives and purposes clearly defined in their minds and operate from that. But I wouldn't take the chance. Write your goals down and set careful priorities. Sometimes priorities are determined by the season. For a farmer in springtime, the season dictates his most important activities. During the spring, a farmer must work around the clock, burn the midnight oil, 
and keep the equipment running because he has only this small window of time for the planting of his crops. One of the difficulties of living in an industrialized society is the losing of the sense of seasons, when to pour it on, when to ease back, when to take advantage. It's easy to keep going from nine to five, year in and year out, and lose a natural sense of priorities and appropriate time. Don't let one year just blend into the next. Keep an eye on your own seasons, lest you lose track of values and substance. Part of setting priorities is learning to separate major activities from minor activities. This is a whole skill in itself, but once you have learned it, it will pay dividends you won't believe. So learn to put everything on your mental scales to be carefully weighed before you spend time or money.